For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly, will be stubble, and the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts. That will leave them neither root nor branch. But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb, for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. My name's Arthur, and these words from Malachi chapter 4 are the closing words of the Old Testament. The day of judgment is coming and it will be directed as judgment against the proud, those who do wickedly. The proud person is the one who says, I don't need God. He didn't make me, I made myself. I don't need him, I can fend for myself. I don't need his instructions, I will do what I please. We have this present time the warning given by the Lord's servants. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. But if you refuse to believe, you are one of the wicked and the day of judgment is coming upon you. A day is coming which shall burn them up. And this will be a complete destruction that will leave them neither root nor branch. But there are others who fear the name of the Lord. They seek the Lord. They desire to know him. And the day of judgment will not strike them to punish them. But rather, that day will be a day of healing. And so the book of Revelation tells us that in the kingdom that God will prepare for the righteous, there shall be no more death or sorrow or tears or hardship. In this life, we experience these things that we might come to know God and the character of God and not rely on our own wisdom. And if we fear his name in this life, and honour him, there will be blessing for us, and not judgment. On the day of judgment, he will come with healing in his wings. You shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. There shall be no more hardship. But we will live in this earth, You will trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts. We need to understand the strong theme that God is, after his mercy and grace and patience and goodness and truthfulness and forgiveness, he is a God of justice. And there is a day that is set for judgment. There is an end to this time of his pleading. So how do we respond? Well, the exhortation for us is to remember the law of Moses, my servant. Now this is written to the Jewish people and it was a test of their faith, whether they would do what they said they would do and keep his statutes and judgments. Jesus explained, search the scriptures for they testify of me. We have a new covenant, for the New Testament means the new covenant. That new covenant extends to all people of all nations, not just the Jewish people, but it also provides a relationship for us with God. And it calls us to live in righteousness and holiness. But this is addressed to the Jewish people. The final words then, is take notice of Moses. Jesus said the same thing, that Moses spoke of him. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. The disciples asked Jesus about Elijah the prophet and Jesus first of all pointed them to 
John the Baptist, as a partial fulfilment at least, because John declared, I am not Elijah the prophet. Nevertheless, he called people to repentance in preparation for the coming of Messiah. Elijah's message is to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. But this prophecy that the Lord will send Elijah is yet to be fulfilled. It's interesting that Elijah was swept up to heaven without dying and that Elijah and Moses met Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Malachi says, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. John the Baptist came and turned the hearts of many people back to the Lord. But the nation rejected Jesus. He was crucified. And so he has gone to heaven, waiting for the day when the Lord tells him to return. That will be the day of the Lord and the day of judgment. But before that great day, the next thing on the prophetic calendar is that believers in the Lord Jesus of this dispensation will be caught up in clouds to meet the Lord in the air. He will say, come up here, and those who believe in him will hear his voice and respond. First of all, those in the grave, but also those who are alive at that time. This will be a shock to the world, and the Jewish people will then understand that Jesus is their Messiah. For they have the words of the New Testament, they just refuse to believe them or receive them. But God will explain these things to his people and we're told in Revelation there will be 144,000 witnesses, Jews from the 12 tribes of Israel, testifying to the Lord throughout the whole world. And in particular there will be two. And the characteristics of these two remind us of Moses and Elijah. For in Revelation 11 we read, I will give power to my two witnesses and they shall prophesy 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. These have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy and they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. And the Jewish people will respond, and many Gentiles also will believe because of their testimony. But the world under Satan will be very determined to destroy the name of God. And so it will be a dreadful day. It's called the Great Tribulation. But that will be the last ditch stand when the Lord sends these two witnesses who will declare the gospel of the kingdom of God, that the Lord Jesus is about to come and establish his kingdom. And those who accept that Jesus is coming and acknowledge him will be saved. But in the interim, they will probably be executed because they believe in God. For that's the devil's way, to destroy those who believe in God. He can't win the argument, so he destroys the witness. But these things are written so that people who live in that time can understand what is happening around them. And the exhortation will be given to them to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, to acknowledge that the kingdom of God is coming, the Messiah is coming, in that case coming back to establish his kingdom. This is when judgment will come on the wicked. God has set the day for it, but his fire will not fall on those who believe in him, whose hearts are turned back to the Lord. So, you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing on his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts. <laughs>